you were one of the original owners of the Houston Rockets. You helped bring the team to Houston. It's an amazing story, and I think about that as a reporter, a former reporter, and a reporter now. I was like, well, how do you do that when you're also a reporter? Is it a conflict of interest? What happened there? Why did you end up doing that? Well, it would have been a conflict of interest, but I didn't have any idea, any clue that we could actually obtain a team. And it started out, Wayne Duddleston, who was a real estate developer in Houston and a good friend of mine, wanted to get a franchise in the NFL in Phoenix. And at that time, they didn't have football in Arizona. And so I took Wayne to New York to meet with the NFL commissioner, Pete Rozelle. And I had been director of communications for the AFL at the time of the merger. Pete told us flatly that there would be no expansion in the NFL for the next 10 years. And when it came, the, the money would start at about $10 million, which at the time seemed like a hugely overpaying price. So... I had a thought as we were leaving the building, I, right across the street from the NFL offices were the NBA offices. I said, why don't we go talk to Walter Kennedy, the commissioner of the NBA, and see if there's an NBA team available. I said, you can get one for a lot less money. And I said, the NBA is going to be big by the end of the 70s and the early 80s. At least I really believed that. And, of course, I think it turned out to be true, except the 90s were when it really exploded. But we went and we saw Walter Kennedy, and there were three franchises for sale. The Milwaukee Bucks, who then had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the San Diego Rockets, and the Cincinnati Royals, who were coached by Bob Cousy. But San Diego appealed to us because their star player was Alvin Hayes. And, of course, they were already called the Rockets, and Houston was already the home of the Rocket Space Program. And you had a little bitty Calvin Murphy that had just got drafted by them. And, and, and we, we didn't know that, didn't know that Calvin, one yet. But we had Calvin Murphy, Rudy T, and Mike Doolin. It really was a terrific roster. So we called, we talked. Bob Breitbart, who is the owner, said he was interested. He talked to us. He said, but he said there wasn't going to be any, any negotiation. So I went out there and I took a cashier's check for $100,000. The asking price was $5.6 million. I gave him the $100,000 good faith deposit so we could look at the books. In three weeks, we made a deal. We had to make a deal because it was July. Teams were going to camp in August, and it was insane. We, we should have kept the team in San Diego. But Breitbart had a problem with the city and the rental on the arena, and he was losing his tail, and he couldn't afford it. So he was either going to sell the team or shut it down. So we had to move quickly. When I knew we were going to buy the team, I wrote a letter to Bill Hobby, resigning from the paper as sports editor, left that on his desk. I called when we made the deal and gave the story to the sports department, at the same time told him to tell Bill to open my letter. So that's how I avoided the conflict of interest, although there had been a little one up to that point. I cut it off after I knew we were going to be involved with the team. Because you're right, I, I couldn't be an owner or partner in the basketball team and still cover sports for the Post. And in fact, when we sold the basketball team, I put in a self-imposed three-year period where I didn't cover the Rockets at all or write about them. Even later, it was hard for me to write about the team because I knew I had that connection that I'd always have. But it, it was a heck of an experience. We, As you mentioned, we had Elvin and Calvin Murphy and Mike Newland, Rudy Tomjanovich, Stu Lance. Some real fine talent if we had just kept that team together. You're listening to Houston Sports Talk.